When we first started this school, many of our kids identified with being inner city youth. That was their first identity. They may have known that they were Native American or that they were indigenous, but they had no idea what that meant. We've created a, a safe place for them to be and a, and a place for them to be proud of who they are. I, I love going here. For the staff and for the students, it kind of all just feels like we're all connected, like we're all kind of like a family. They allowed me to establish friendships and relationships with people who share my culture. We burn sage every day just uh, really to get to help kids get prepared for the school day and help our staff get prepared for the school day. Terry Bissonette, Indigenous Cause, Kanoje Kaning and Dojaba, Makwato Dem. My name is Terry Bissonette. I am Gonoje Kaninga Anishinaabe, and I am the founder and head of School of American Indian Academy of Denver. We opened AIAD so that we could serve uh, the most severely underserved population in Denver Public Schools, which is our Native American and Indigenous students. We serve six through 10 this school year, and we are in our third year of operation. The school districts in Denver, including Denver Public Schools, um, has a long history of, of not serving our students very well. And so we opened the school in hopes um, of giving them a place where that they could not only see themselves, but also um, be able to see the future. And I think it's been four schools I've taught at. There's a small percentage of, of Native students. And, and those who, who are there rarely even came to school. So. Um, to, see, to see the number of students, the number of indigenous students here at American Indian Academy of Denver um, is powerful. We've got kids that they ride a bus two hours each way to get here. We have kids coming from 30 different zip codes here in the Denver metro area. I chose to go to the school because I kind of just wanted to get a different experience than public schools that I've been to because I knew there was more, but I wasn't exactly sure what that was. They're uh, being able to experience our mission-driven learning, which is really important, um, our indigenized STEAM, which is science, technology, engineering, art, and math from an indigenous perspective. Uh, we've done a lot of land-based learning this year, so taking kids out to develop a relationship with the land and water around them. But the humanities is the biggest part. That's, that's our biggest focus with uh, students learning about indigenous history because they learn about who they are, they learn about who they could be. Anishie Axel Kano Yanishie. My name is Axel Kano. I didn't want to go to AID because somehow in my brain I didn't feel like comfortable, but at the same time I didn't know who I was. One of my favorite classes is Lakota because my, my grandparents, like the language is like being lost, like they are forgetting it. So it's, I think, important for me as a young person to be able to carry on like that tradition. My favorite class is either Diné, which is the Navajo language, or music, because I get to play guitar. We're the first school in the state of Colorado to offer Diné as a language. Um, but we also have Lakota life skills. We have um, several cultural uh, kind of arts and crafts uh, electives going on this spring semester. MMIW is a movement based off of missing and murdered indigenous women. So it's basically just the fact that uh, native women are more likely to go missing or murdered than any other race. Um, in all of our classes, in Lakota, in humanities, and in art, we're paying tribute. And um, our Wakashka Yusa program, which is uh, the youth leadership program, uh, where kids get to tan a hide. They were part of the Buffalo gifting with the city and county of Denver. Uh, those kinds of things are not offered in other schools. What has impacted me the most are the kids that tell me that this school saved their life. Indigenous students, whether they were successful academically or not, didn't feel like they belonged in the schools they were in. Our students 
who are indigenous, who have native blood, who have uh, in indigenous names, last names, first names, nicknames, um, they're able to go by them here. In those other schools, you know, they were just a number. So we are on the ancestral homelands of the Cheyenne, Arapaho, Lakota, and the, the Ute. Um, and that's always been the case. We actually, there are over 20 tribes that um, can legitimately claim the front range as ancestral homelands. You know, we're, we're, we're marginalized, we're, we're, we're put in the shadows, we're not thought of, you know, they think, oh, cowboys and Indians, that was a long time ago, but they don't realize that we're still here. Unfortunately, we are closing at the end of the school year due to under-enrollment, but we've ignited that flame in them, you know, whether we're open or closed, they'll be able to take that anywhere. I was sad for a long period, but at the same time, we didn't have enough students, not at all. I definitely still am a little bit emotional about it. Um, it's just the fact that, like, I have made so many friends here. I finally feel like I have a place where I belong and where people understand me. What I'm going to do next is try and do my best in high school and stay intact with my culture. It's something that will stick with me, probably the Lakota lifestyle, the Red Road. For me, to walk the Red Road, it means to be free of mind, to accept things as it is and just keep going. <laughs>